Hive Mind Network Online, Channel 0093. Secure uplink initiated. Stinger OS now active. Hello, agents. This is Jerobi, one of the developers of Night Team 4, here to show you around the uh, Alpha 0.2 we have of the Stinger OS, give you a little bit of background on what we're doing, and kind of explain uh, the whole process of uh, the development of Night Team 4. So this is the intro uh, video tutorial. We'll be doing a series of these video tutorials for each of the alphas, but also each of the specific modules within each alpha, basically explain to you what we're doing with the game, uh, where we're hoping to go, and how things are being done. You can see Kate Zilla behind me. She's working on the mission for the next alpha right now. Um, so as you know, we're the people behind uh, the Black Watchmen, and we're doing this alpha and beta in the same way that we did for the Black Watchmen, meaning that we're building it one step at a time. And so because we're doing that, we don't have the time to uh, build a tutorial for each new uh, module that we're doing just because so much may change and we don't want to spend the time doing a tutorial for something we may end up throwing out. So instead, I'll be here showing you around each new phase that we develop and as we develop each of these phases, we then have the building blocks to build out much more complex, intense and immersive missions. So right now, we have the foundation, we have the, we're working on the back end, the API, the infrastructure for what t 19 4 will become. And we've built very basic uh, very basic tools that you can interact with that infrastructure in simple missions. So if we log in here, welcome agent. Uh, you can see the basic in interface that we've set up. Now this is going to uh, evolve over time. We're working on how it can become more immersive and set the mood better. Um, and this is uh, also where we're going to be building all of our different modules because we have in mind exactly what we want to do in terms of the dynamics we want to give you, the emotion we want to present in the game. We want you to really feel like you're part of an elite hacking unit that is able, it is conducting cyber warfare and able to infiltrate very, very secure places in unique and special ways. But we, we haven't quite figured out the mechanics to implement right now in order to best uh, give you that feeling. So that's why we're going to be doing all these alphas and, and exploring various things, working with your feedback to figure out how we can best deliver that to you. So here I'll just show you around really quickly. The If you go into the settings, you can see our, va our various skins. So this is the skeleton skin here, the 19.4 skin. Now we have the ghost skin and the elite skin. Both of those are available to our Kickstarter backers and uh, to people who pre-order. You can pre-order in the description below. Uh, for this video. So here's the ghost skin and here's the elite skin. These skins right now are really just a uh, change of color and background. That's not all we want to do with them. We really want to uh, build them out more, make them more exciting and engaging and that might mean uh, adding additional highlights, changing the icons. Uh, we're really playing around with that so that is another aspect that we're looking for your feedback on is not only how you feel about the mechanics, about the mission, and all of that kind of stuff, but about the, the UI, the mood, the music you hear, all of that. So we're really looking forward to your feedback on all of that. We'll just go back to the regular 19.4 one here. Now the other thing that I want to talk about quickly is these workspaces over here. So we have six of them because we really want to be playing around with the idea of multitasking while you're performing your hacking. So I'm just going to bring out some hacking tools here. I'll explain what they are in other videos. Information gathering module initiated. Information gathering module initiated. Fox Acid server connection initiated. So I, I brought out three here. Uh, I'll explain what they are in in very briefly in this video, and then we'll go into more detail in another video. But the idea is these two here are information gathering tools. This one is a Fox Acid server uh, malware injection tool. And so let's say you have a target and you're trying to figure out what the best way to exploit that target is. It's not necessarily a linear process. You're not going from A to B to C. So what you might do on these two workspaces here is run tests. 
and try and see if you can find uh, if you can widen your attack service and you can find another place that might be vulnerable and while you're running those you could maybe test out a third option see if you can exploit something right away on here now if this one fails you can jump back over here and see see if you've gotten any results and what's exciting about that is that kind of increases the scope of what you're doing at any one time because you know we want to give the f you the feeling that you are being able to really look in detail into your target and find unique ways of attacking them, exploiting them that aren't necessarily apparent. And what better way to do that than run multiple recon uh, tools against them at the same time? So that's that's the idea there. Let's get into uh, these hacking uh, these hacking tools quickly. Once again, we'll have additional videos covering each of them. So if we jump in here. You can see the first one that we have is information gathering. Now there are various tools in there that are all about doing recon, trying to figure out exactly all the details of your targets so you can figure out how to best exploit them. Then you have vulnerability analysis. That one is about once you know what you're dealing with, with your target, it's about prodding and, and poking, seeing what you can find within your target's exposed networks, figure out what is gonna be best to attack. Password attack is going to run a series of dictionary attacks against a target's password, try to break through in various different ways. The Turbine C2 registry is something that we're going to get into in far more detail in another video, but uh, C2 stands for command and control, and that's all about being able to control your target's network once you've already set up a back door, and you can do all sorts of fun things with that. The Fox Acid server. Now, the Fox Acid server is based on a real NSA. Uh, project called Fox Acid, which is a uh, malware and exploit injection tool that where once you have the specific parameters for your target, you can you can inject all sorts of malware using that tool. Um, and so you have to do a lot of recon first. You have to figure out where your where the vulnerabilities of the target are. And once you've done that, then you can inject that malware using Fox Acid. Keyscore Forensics is a really, really fascinating thing that once again, we'll get to in a, in a uh, different video. It's also an NSA tool, uh, also share, used by uh, the agencies of the Five Eyes. And what that is, is that is uh, an ability to basically monitor almost any uh, form of communication on online channels. And you can sift through that to try and find as much information as you can about your target. Uh, truly a, a terrifying thing there, but absolutely fascinating. And I'm sure it'll be very fun for you to use. So that's the basics there. Uh, in, in the additional videos in this series right now, we'll be going into what is involved in the information gathering tools and uh, a introduction to the Fox Acid server. We'll also look at the mission center, see how we're gonna be creating missions within this early alpha and what the missions are gonna look like from there. So you'll have links to all those videos uh, at the end of this, plus uh, a link to pre-order the game. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. We're really looking forward to getting all your feedback and uh, you ha you becoming really part of this development process as we continue to build out 19.4. So thank you so so much for watching and have a nice day. Closing root access. Goodbye. You can find more 19.4 tutorials here, like an intro to the Stinger OS, a look into mission structure in the Multigo CE recon graphs, DNS and port scanning attacks plus fingerprinting and the Fox Asset server. You can also pre-order the game by clicking on the bottom right hand of the screen. Hive Mind Network Online, channel 0093. Secure uplink initiated. Stinger OS now active. Welcome, Agent. Hello, Drobi here. I'm here to show you around the Alpha 0.2 of the Stinger OS for 19.4. This is the fourth uh, tutorial video and the last one in this series going over the aspects of the Alpha 0.2 and the modules we have in place right now. Uh, if you're just joining us, welcome, and I invite you to check out the introduction video to this series, which you can find in the description below or at the end of this video. What we're going to be doing specifically here is we're going to be looking into uh, the host fingerprinting and then the Fox Acid server malware injection tools to complete uh, the objective of our mission. 
uh, we're using what we already have, uh, which we gathered in the last couple of videos about blackwatchman.com. Of course, this isn't the actual target for the mission of this alpha, just using it as an example. And we're going to see about finding out the technology behind the open ports we have found for the subdomains. Now the reason that we're doing this is because the Fox Acid server injects very specific kinds of malware. It knows work well against very specific technologies. So in order to know what those technologies are, we have to do a host fingerprint. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna open up a tool here. Information gathering module initiated. So we're gonna open up host fingerprint and what we're going to do is we're going to fingerprint blackwatching.com and we're going to fingerprint the port 80, which is the one that we've found to be open on this subdomain. So now while that's running, uh, I can just explain to you a little bit about how this works. So basically what this is doing is it's trying to figure out which specific technology is running off of that port. So it sends signals out on that port. And then when it gets those signals back, it's able to tell us which uh, server or technology is being run off that port. So in this case, we got back the Apache server, which is not, uh, not that surprising considering that Apache is the most common web server used uh, for uh, the World Wide Web. And so, but now this means that we know the technology so we can take the next step. So the technology used on www.blackwatcher.com is Apache. Now with this information, let's go in and check out the Fox Acid server. So I'm gonna open another workspace here. Fox Acid server connection initiated. So this Fox Acid server is very exciting stuff. It's based on real NSA, a real NSA system, and it's a set of servers that is used to inject specific kinds of malware. Now it works with tools like Second Date, various quantum attacks, and Validator. You can find more information about all of these real NSA tools in the description of this video. Uh, but I can quickly tell you that it it does all sorts of fun stuff, like install backdoors for a C2 registry, you can access nearly any files on a system, and it can gain very detailed information about the target's network. Now, let's try and implant some malware into uh, blackwatchman.com, and if you look, this is actually the example that we have up here right now, so we'll just follow this example, and we'll see what we get. And I'll explain to you a little bit more about what's going on as we let it run. So we're gonna do this against the subdomain Black Watchman or Black Watchman's website, www.blackwatchman.com. And we're doing that against the open port 80 that we found with the technology we know is behind that port, which is Apache. So now it is gonna to attempt to inject the malware. Now at this stage, uh, the way that we set up this uh, module is that it selects which tools it which malware tools it knows to be effective against an apache server and we'll send it along that port to that subdomain we might want to change this because we might want to make it more uh customizable for you because at, at certain stages you might find a target that is more vulnerable and will be vulnerable to various different kinds of attacks so you know learning about which attacks and what those do would be very interesting to uh, to decide based on your mission parameters what's going to be most effective. Now, in this case, uh, the attack failed because the uh, this uh, port and the technology behind it is not vulnerable to this kind of attack. That's fine. This is simply a demonstration. Uh, what you have to do in this alpha is go in based on the mission is to go in and find stuff within the Ropa group. So the thing to do there is going to be go to go into your mission center, look at that recon map that was created by uh, Maltigo CE, and figure out based on what you now know you need for the Fox Acid server, which is once again, you need a subdomain, you need an open port, and you need the technology behind that port. And you can run multiple uh, recon scans of the various entities connected to Roper Group, you know, um, Morpho Medical, 
uh, the Rosenberg Clinic and see what you can find, what are available open ports and what are the technologies behind those ports. And then when you have that information, bring it to the Fox Acid server, see which of those is vulnerable. That will help you complete your mission. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back to explain more modules when we release Alpha 0 0.3. Uh, but for now, that's it for the tutorial. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Closing route access. Goodbye. You can find more 19.4 tutorials here, like an intro to the Stinger OS, a look into mission structure in the Maltigo CE recon graphs, DNS and port scanning attacks, plus fingerprinting and the Fox Acid server. You can also pre-order the game by clicking on the bottom right hand of the screen. Hive Mind Network Online. Channel 0093. Secure uplink initiated. Stinger OS now active. Welcome, Agent. Hello again, Jerobi here to show you around the Alpha 0.2 of 194 Stinger OS. In this video tutorial, we're going to be going over some of the information gathering tools available in the uh, game at this time. If this is uh, your first time joining us, welcome, and I'd recommend checking out the introduction video. Uh, you can find a link to that at the end of this video or else in the description. So in the last video, we looked into uh, how missions are structured and the Maltigo CE recon map that showed us uh, the intel that we had already. In this video, we're going to dive into the actual terminal and see the uh, what we have available in this current alpha. Mind you, all of these tools uh, may change. We're working to improve them in various ways and, and uh, eager to get your feedback on how we can do that. So if I open up these hacking tools here, we're going into the DNS and vhost mapping tool. Information gathering module initiated. So with this tool, what we're going to be looking at is finding subdomains for specific domain names. So uh, a domain name like blackwatchman.com uh, has a, a whole bunch of different subdomains, some of which are public and some of which may be private, uh, which we can use as hackers to exploit. The more of them we know, the, the, the larger uh, possibility we could find one that is more vulnerable. Now, some of these are going to be public facing, like a website. Uh, and uh, or a forum. Some of these might be private, like an intranet. Uh, or, and then there are also s specific subdomains which services run off, like an IRC uh, or a uh, webmail server, that kind of thing. And with the DNS and vhost mapping tools, we have two different techniques to find out what all the subdomains are for a specific domain. So what's What's important about this is we're, uh, we're peeling back the various layers of the internet around our target to see what we can expose. And the more we can expose, the more chance we'll have at a finding a vulnerable entry point. So there are two ways to go about this. The first one is the S fuzzer. Now the S fuzzer is a dictionary attack and it takes blackwatchman.com and runs a a whole bunch of words in front of that to see if it can find any that that work you know it'll it'll try www obviously just to look for a website but it'll also try intranet it will try IRC it will try all sorts of different things and the longer you let it run the more words it will use so it will start with the the simplest the most commonly used words and it will continue for for a longer time uh, the deeper the fuzzer attack is with more complex words, combining simple words, adding numbers to the end. So for instance, it might quickly pick up intranet.blackwatchman.com, but if you let it run longer, it would try corporate intranet at blackwatchman.com or webmail1 at blackwatchman.com, those kind of things. So you're, you're, you're really, the longer you're letting it run, the more possibility you'll find uh, different domains that may not be the obvious choices. So what we're going to do is we're just going to we're going to run two of them on the same domain. We're going to run it on blackwatchman.com. So we'll put type in our command here: s fuzzer And that was set the timer. This is 
how long it's going to run the dictionary attack for. So we'll set this one for 10 seconds. Now we're going to open up a new hacking tool, the same thing, in a new workspace. Information gathering module initiated. Now this time, we're going to let it run for two minutes on blackwatchman.com and see if we can find any more results. Because we're letting it run for longer, once again, it's going to try out more unique words, not necessarily the most common. So if we go S fuzzer, so 120 seconds. So now that's going to run in the background. While we're doing that, we're going to run another type. Information gathering module. Initiated. We're going to run another type of scan that's going to complement the S fuzzer, but it might bring up different results. Now, this kind of scan is an OSINT scan. OSINT means open source intelligence, meaning we're combing the internet, we're combing tools that already exist to help us find out more information about the target. What's exciting about this is that we're using powerful tools like Bing, Google's algorithms against our target because they're going to be scraping the internet trying to find all sorts of different links where things are hosted all that kind of stuff for uh, the the target which in this case is the domain blackwatchman.com and it may pick up things that wouldn't necessarily be picked up by the S fuzzer the reason for that is the S fuzzer is looking for common words that are used and even the longer you let it run the less common it's going to go, but it's, it might not pick up some very unique uh, subdomains which the Black Watcher and White use. So right now, uh, we're offering as the example here, uh, OSINT scan Black Watchman Google for 500 results. That's what we're going to let run. But in the future of the game, what we're, we're hoping to do uh, would be to allow you to also access private search engines, private servers. This may be a way that we can integrate the player created server nodes in, which will allow you to comb through privately available uh, intelligence that isn't that isn't you know used by the, the general public, but is still technically open source because it is still not intelligence we've gathered. So let's run this OSINT scan against the Black Watchman. with Google and look at the first 500 results and we're going to see how this compares to what we have in our other workspaces for the S fuzzer. So now this is done and you can see here that we have seven different subdomains. So we have the website, we have an archive, infiltration of blackwatching.com, then we have the CDN, Intrusion, Wiki, and the Forums. You can see where they're indexed in that search engine. Now let's compare this to the S fuzzer uh, that we've run, the two, and see what they got. So here's the S fuzzer at two minutes, and we have five subdomains here. You'll notice it got some of the same ones, but it didn't get things like Intrusion, intrusion or infiltration since those aren't common subdomains those are subdomains that we created specifically for black watcher missions but they're not something that would commonly be on a lot of different domains that's why OSINT scan is going to be more effective at certain things than the s fuzzer attack and now if you compare this s fuzzer at 120 seconds to this one at 10 you can really see the difference because this one just ran for 10 seconds it only got one subdomain this one got five. Now, this is something that we're still working on. We're trying to figure out what the optimal amount of time is going to be, how we can hint that to you. But one thing we're considering is the idea of letting you run these scans in the background while you're completing the mission in a different way. So let's say you ran a, a fuzzer attack for 20 minutes against a domain. Now, presumably, you're not just going to sit there and wait for 20 minutes while it runs the attack. You're going to be trying to infiltrate the target in different ways. You're going to be trying all sorts of different techniques in these other work screens here. Now, maybe you hit a roadblock, and you hit that roadblock around 20 minutes in. 
then you can go back to your you can go back to your fuzzer attack and see that oh it found something really deeply hidden you know it's a very unique word and that would be a way for us to provide hints to you at a, at a certain time limit so that you're not spending too long you're not getting stuck too long on one mission component so now that we have this information we can try and figure out a little bit more about these subdomains using the port scanner now what the port scanner does is it helps you find open ports within a host or a server by sending a series of requests to the subdomain and then returning you with the active ones now I'm gonna let this run because it takes a little while right now so let's open a new workstation here information gathering module initiated so I'm gonna let it run and then I'm gonna explain what what exactly we're doing here so let's once again port scan the black watchman so we found the subdomain for black www.blackwatchman.com that is of course the website so now it's starting to scan now when you open up a new uh, module we're gonna have this information you can see here which explains to you a little bit about what's going on we're also always gonna have an example you can also run a help command which will give you a more detailed example now what the the port scanner is doing is it's really looking into um, active ports which will we can then try and figure out the technology behind those ports and that's gonna be where we're going to proceed uh, the likely this port scan will reveal that the open port on the website of blackwatchman.com is going to be 80 since that's the one that the port that is connected to the World Wide Web having said that if we went over here and looked at the um, intrusion blackwatchman.com or the wiki or over here and found the IRC those likely wouldn't be on the, the 80 port, those would be on different ports since the IRC is a service, it's not actually a website. Um, and so p running a port scan, you can run them on multiple things and it will come up with different results. The other thing is that once we have not only the subdomain but also the, the open port, that's going to allow us to move ahead in the host fingerprinting analysis which will be the next video which will explain the technology behind that and with all of this information now we can move to an exploit phase and try out the Fox Acid server so here the port scan is just finishing when, like I said we found the port 80 because that's the one that connects the domain to the World Wide Web so now that we have this information we're going to end this video and move into the host fingerprinting analysis and the Fox Acid server where we can Im implant our malware. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Closing route access. Goodbye. You can find more 19-port tutorials here, like an intro to the Stinger OS, a look into mission structure in the Maltigo CE recon graphs, DNS and port scanning attacks, plus fingerprinting and the Fox Acid server. You can also pre-order the game by clicking on the bottom right hand of the screen. Hive Mind Network Online, Channel 0093, Secure Uplink Initiated. Stinger OS now active. Welcome, Agent. Hello, this is Jerobi, uh, helping you navigate the Alpha 0.2 of Night Team 4. This is the second video in the tutorial series. If you're just joining us, welcome. I'd also recommend checking out the Introduction to Cyber Warfare and Hacking video, which you can find in the description below or at the end of this video. Uh, and if you're just coming from that video, welcome back. In this one, we're going to go over the Mission Center, look at how we're going to be crafting missions in the Alpha and Beta stages of Night Team 4, and looking at the exciting real-world tool of Maltigo CE, which we use to create recon graphs. And you can use those recon graphs to better uh, formulate your attack strategy and use real-world intel to help you become a more efficient hacker. So if we go into the mission center here, we have a big recon graph here. The uh, I'll get into that in a second. First of all, because these are introductory missions and this is really to test the infrastructure of the uh, game we have in place right now, 
the missions are quite linear and straightforward in terms of their goals. So in this case, we're looking for vulnerabilities within RoboGroup Holdings uh, and seeing which organizations are, they are involved with and how we might best get in. Uh, as the game evolves, the missions will become more complex. There'll be various stages within a single mission. Uh, in this case, it is a, there are still steps involved, but this is just one stage of the recon stage of what a full mission might look like. So going into uh, this graph here, uh, this graph is created with a real-world tool called Multigo CE, and that tool allows you to uh, imp show relationships between organizations, people, entities, all sorts of things, and graph their relationships, try and figure out where they're, they're might be vulnerable, what they're connected to, and map out where you would be able to go in and look for vulnerabilities. So in this case, we're looking at Ropa Group here. Now, Ropa Group has three entities, this intel tells us, connected to it. We have the Rosenberg Clinic, Morpho Medical, and Oak Valley. So if you look at Oak Valley over here, all we really have to go on with this intel are people and organizations. Now, there's no real connection to the online world within this framework because we don't know these people's email addresses, we don't know any uh, websites or anything like that. So while we have information on Oak Valley, it isn't necessarily useful to us at this stage. If you go over to Morpho Medical, you can see a different story. So we have four email addresses here, meaning that's four separate places where we could try and perform phishing attacks. That is That also gives us the domain names of morphomedical.com. So we have emails where we could uh, perform phishing attacks, or we could go out over the actual uh, domain name of morphomedical.com, see if we can find some subdomains, see if we can find any weaknesses in there. So that's one possibility. Ropa Group itself, we don't have a lot of information on it other than this one site. And this, this site is an onion site, meaning it's on the dark web. It's going to be hard to go after. Uh, there's not a lot we can do with that right away. But that information tells us that perhaps Roper Group has something to hide. They've taken the time to create a secure Onion website for a, a large organization. Maybe they're doing some nefarious things on there, but at least we know that they take their security very seriously. So that's probably not going to be the best place to go in after Roper Group. Now over here, Rosenberg Clinic seems a lot more promising. Not only do we have four separate individuals, and we know them by name, which will be a lot easier for phishing attacks, we also have the four emails for each of them. They're the domain names we can use, as well as two phone numbers here. Now this one phone number, this is a real world phone number, we're not gonna go into how to hack that at this stage because that's, uh, that is not the easiest way to get into the system, but we have this uh, SIP phone number here. Now this SIP number is an online uh, VoIP service which would allow, uh, the, which is online, so that might be hackable. So that's one possibility here. Plus we have the Rosenberg domain name and these four emails. So this gives you a sense of right away using recon that was gathered for this mission before you even get started in your own information gathering of how you can map out the uh, to the target and see the connections with other organizations. Now this tool is available for free online. I'll put a link in the description uh, where you can download it yourself and you can use this tool in your investigations to start mapping out your your targets, uh, your opponents, all of all of the organizations within the 19.4 universe and it's going to be super useful. Every time you find a new email address, new phone number, a connection between organizations, you can map it out on a chart like this and it will help you immensely, not only in performing uh, penetration, but also in performing phishing attacks and looking at ways that you can leverage uh, one person against another. So that is a brief overview of the Maltigo CE and of the Mission Center. We'll go on in the next video to explain information gathering, do some uh, DNS and vhost mapping and some port scanning and get into how we can complete this mission here. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Closing route access. Goodbye. You can find more 19.4 tutorials here, like an intro to the Stinger OS, a look into mission structure in the Maltigo CE recon graphs, 
DNS and port scanning attacks, plus fingerprinting and the Fox Acid server. You can also pre-order the game by clicking on the bottom right hand of the screen. Hive Mind Network Online, Channel 0093. Secure uplink initiated. Stinger OS now active. Welcome, Agent. Hi there, everyone. This is Jerobi uh, here to show you around the Alpha 0.3 of the Stinger OS for 19.4. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if it's your first time with us, uh, we highly recommend checking out the intro to the Stinger OS and Cyber Warfare. You can find a link to that video in the description below or at the end of this video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at the password attack module and seeing how we can infiltrate uh, targets' passwords with a very specific intel and how we can improve our chances of getting into a password more quickly by doing more recon and using very specific dictionary attacks against that target. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to open up the second workspace. Password attack and intrusion module initiated. And what this module is all about is accessing someone's email. And the way you do that is you have to have a very specific target URL, so a very specific subdomain, and then their username. Obviously, you ha can't hack into an account that doesn't exist, so you have to make sure you have the credentials right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this attack against the Rosenberg Clinic, a entity everyone knows well uh, from the first Alpha mission and also from the Black Watchman. But in order to do so, we need to gather a little bit of recon information about them before we can do this password attack. So I'm going to go in here and open up a couple DNS attacks. Information gathering module initiated. Information gathering module initiated. So I've opened up two separate DNS and vhost mapping uh, platforms here within one workspace. You can have as many of these as you want open within one workspace. The reason we have the different workspaces is so you have a little bit of a cleaner look for different kinds of modules. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and figure out how we can access a email server within the Rosenberg Clinic. The way we're going to do that is we're going to run an SFuzzer scan and an OSINT scan against them and see if we can find a useful subdomain we can go and use for our password attack. So the first thing we're going to do here is do an SFuzzer attack against the Rosenberg Clinic. And we're going to do this for 45 seconds so we can really get a sense of trying to get as much as we can on them. Remember, the longer it runs, the more the dictionary attack is going to run through that scan and find more possible subdomains. So we're going to let that run. Meanwhile, we'll come over here and we're going to do an OSINT scan on the Rosenberg Clinic. And this one, we're going to use Google to search the public records and see if we can find any other information about them here. We're going to do that for the first thousand results. Once again, the reason that we're doing this is to try and find a intranet or email server that the Rosenberg Clinic uses that we can infiltrate because if we don't have the specific subdomain, we can't do anything with our password attack. So with the OSINT scan, we got two here. We have their website and we have the CDN. Neither of those are useful for a subdomain attack or for a password attack, excuse me. Let's see if we found anything within our S fuzzer. So in our S fuzzer, you can see we have a webmail here. Now webmail is exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to use this and we're going to put it into our password attack and we're going to target a known entity at uh, the Rosenberg Clinic, Mario Nathaniel. Our Black Watch and players will know uh, Dr. Nathaniel well. And if you remember from Alpha 0 0.2 in the Malto CE Intel graph, he was connected to the uh, Rosenberg Clinic and therefore connected to the Ropa group and so our target URL which we just found is webmail .com. 
and the target username is M Nathaniel. Target acquired. Awaiting variables to launch attack. So now we have what we need to perform an attack. So I'm going to launch one right away and ex and it's going to take a long time and then I'll explain why we're not actually going to use that one and why we're going to open up a second one. So I'm going to do rock you here. Attack launched. And I'm going to let it run. And you see it's got three minutes to run that attack. So it's going to take a while. I'll explain why that might not be the best strategy at this stage. So what we'll do is we'll open up a, another password attack here. Password attack and intrusion module initiated. And we're doing it once again to webmail at Rosenberg Clinic. And we are looking at M. Nathaniel. Target acquired. Awaiting variables to launch attack. So you can see this one is still running. It's going through the dictionary there and uh, trying out various things. So what these dictionaries are is every time uh, a hacking group or an individual hacker uh, gets access to a wide variety of passwords from a website, they'll dump those passwords online and other hackers can use that information to build up dictionaries of common passwords. So Rocky, the one that we have running in, in the other workstation, has 32 million of the most commonly used passwords from all of those. So it's kind of like a Swiss army knife that has taken the 32 million most common and will run through those. That is still quite a lot. It, like we said, it'll still take three minutes. We have John the Ripper, which takes, which is the most uh, useful right away, but not necessarily the most useful in the long term. It takes the 1 million most commonly used passwords and runs through those. So if you see the difference here, this one's 3 minutes and 12 seconds. This one's 6 seconds. So it, it's very fast to run through those million uh, words in the dictionary. But the reason that you might not always want to use it is because these are only the 1 million most commonly used passwords. So a more secure target, someone that knows a little bit more about cybersecurity, likely isn't using one of those common passwords. But you may as well try to use John the Ripper earlier on in your investigation because it, you might get lucky and you might stumble upon it very quickly. The other dictionaries we have here are the Gmail and Hotmail. Now, as you can see, there are a ton of passwords in this dictionary because there have been a lot of Gmail and Hotmail password dumps over the, the, the history of both of those services. So this is an agglomeration of all of that. But this is a dictionary you might want to use more often when you are dealing with someone's personal email account because oftentimes people's Gmail accounts or Hotmail accounts or their personal accounts and so the kinds of passwords they will use will be similar on other personal accounts. Now we also have eHarmony here. Now eHarmony is 12 million. This is to do with a recent eHarmony password dump and this is going to be more secondary. Password attack unsuccessful. Uh, you can see here we had an unsuccessful uh, password attack when we went through and used the uh, Rock U because we did not give it enough information and unfortunately it, it did not work. I'll explain why that was, um, but as you can see, even sometimes when you let it run for a long time, if you haven't given it the, the correct parameters and the correct intel, you're going to get an unsuccessful attack. So. With the eHarmony, it's much more about the uh, secondary accounts because most people's eHarmony account is not their first account. They have an email or something else first. And so they're using these eHarmony passwords as a secondary account. So if you are trying to hack into someone else's secondary account, eHarmony might be the way to go. LinkedIn, huge uh, library of words there. But the thing about the LinkedIn one is that people often use their LinkedIn uh, email accounts when it is specific to corporate email accounts or business email accounts. So if you're trying to 
log into a corporate internet, someone's business email, that kind of thing, LinkedIn dictionary might be the way to go. And then finally here, you have social media. Once again, huge library because this is Facebook leaks, Twitter leaks, Instagram, all of that kind of stuff. So this one, once again, might be more useful when you're trying to go after someone's secondary account or else specifically one of their social media accounts. A couple other points I'll touch on here. So now you see if we put in all of these, it's going to be 790 million words to go through a dictionary. Now that is far too much, so your access is denied. The reason your access is denied is because 19.4 only has a limited number of computing resources to give to you for your mission and to run through 900 and or sorry, 790 million passwords, that's going to take a long time. It's going to take a lot of computing. The reason it's going to take so long, it's going to take so much computing, is not only the word count, it's also certain targets are going to be more well protected, meaning their servers have things like capture blocks or IP blocks, meaning there can only be a certain number of attempts at a password before there's either a captcha or that IP is not allowed to attempt another password. So this system has to circumvent that and all of that kind of stuff is really going to take computing power. So you as a junior agent at the moment of 19.4 do not have access to that much computing power so you will be denied. A way, if, if your request is currently being denied, a way to do that is to try a different dictionary or else include more variables. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to stick with John the Ripper, which is, like I said, the most simple dictionary because it is the most common. But we're going to improve our odds a little bit by adding some information into the Prince config. Now what the Prince config does is it takes recon information that you've gathered and compares it against the target and the, the dictionary list of names. So for instance, it will look at first name, last name, age, and various variables, uh, where someone's from, where they went to school, the name of their, their spouse, their children, that kind of thing, their interests, and it will validate whether or not that information is known to be true about them online, but will also look at the metadata of the dictionaries and, and pair them with similar people that fit their profile. Because if you're trying to hack into someone's email account, the more information you can know about them, the more likely you are to guess the correct password. A business person from Japan who's 50 is going to have very different password preferences than an 18-year-old from the States. And so by knowing more about someone, the system, which is a very, mo it's, it's a password guessing algorithm, the algorithm itself is going to be much more efficient the more you can tell it about your target. So for right now, and for the Alpha 0 0.3 uh, mission that you have, we're going to provide you that intel. We're going to provide you the names, the age, all of that kind of stuff. But in real 19.4 missions, this is the kind of thing that you're going to need to gather yourself during the recon phase. When you're checking out a target, trying to get more information about them, these are the kinds of things you're going to be gathering. And this is what's going to help the Prince config create a better reshuffle the dictionary so it can go through it faster and link your target with similar people build a, build a similar profile for them so what we're going to do is uh we know about dr nathaniel Mero nathaniel from the black watchman this is a very specific mission where you get a background report about him so we're going to take information from that background report and we're going to put it in here which is going to improve our odds so from the report we know that his name is Mario. His last name is Nathaniel. Now see here, I misspelt it. What that means is that it checked online and saw that Mario Nathaniel's email is not connected with someone named Nathaniel. It is in fact properly spelt. Not like that either apparently. Now for his age, we're going to put 64. The other variables are interest, school, uh, where he'd be from, that kind of thing. So we know, once again, from that Intel report within the Black Watchman, 
that his wife's name is Jennifer, that one of his children's name is Mark, and that the other one's name is Dorothy. Now look, we've reshuffled the dictionary 60%. That means we built up a quite a, a good profile of what kind of person Mary Nathaniel is in terms of the likely passwords he is to use. We've greatly reduced our time and now the system is going to be able to be much more efficient at cracking this password. So let's uh, let's run it and see see what we can find. Attack launched. Password successfully compromised. We compromised the password in three seconds thanks to the intel that we had already gathered. So the password is Bedlam. Veteran Black Watchman players will know what to do with that password for Mar and Nathaniel. And for the rest of you, that, that shows you how you perform a password attack against a target. So first, you have to gather the subdomain specific to that the target's email. Then you have to figure out what their username is. And then from there, build up a profile, find out their name, their age, their interests, any kind of recon information you can. And then think about, okay, what kind of email is it? Is it a corporate account? Is it, is it a, a secondary email? Is it a personal email? And then figure out which dictionary is gonna work best for your attack. Once you figure all of that out, we're gonna build in that kind of logical process within our missions, you're gonna be able to figure out which dictionary you wanna use, and you're gonna be able to, if you do your recon correctly, hopefully you're gonna be able to crack your password. So thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we're gonna be going over the C, or the Turbine C2 registry. Uh, so look forward to that, and thank you so much. Closing route access, goodbye. You can find more 19.4 tutorials here, like an intro to the Stinger OS, a look into the password attack module, the Turbine C2 registry, plus you can find a full playlist of hacking tools currently available in the game. You can also pre-order 19.4 by clicking on the bottom right hand of the screen. Community links to our Discord server and dedicated forums can be found in the description below. Hive Mind Network Online, Channel 0093, Secure Uplink Initiated. Stinger OS now active. Welcome, Agent. Hi, Droby here. Show you around the Alpha 0.3 of the Stinger OS for Night Team 4. Uh, in this tutorial video, we're going to be going over the uh, Turbine C2 registry. If you're just joining us, welcome. I highly recommend checking out the first video in the series, an introduction to the Stinger OS. You can find a description, uh, a link to that in the description of this video or else right at the end. And if you're uh, joining us again, welcome back. So in this one, we're going to be going over the Turbine C2 registry, how it is currently used in the Alpha OS, what we're hoping to do with it, and how it can be useful to you in the Alpha 0.3 mission. So let's open it up. I'll explain to you a little bit about what it is, what we're looking at, and, ha and show you an example of how we can use it. Turbine C2 registry initiated. So once you launch a Fox Acid attack against a network and it's successful, you'll gain control of that network and it will show up here. So you can see in the first mission of Alpha 0.2, we did an attack against the Rosenberg's Clinic's uh, SIP subdomain. So now it shows up within our uh, registry. Now. Once you have control of a network like this, you can use it to your advantage for various means. Currently, those means are limited to using it as a proxy when you want to attack or probe another target, so you're protecting yourself, or else you can use it to access internal subdomains and internal files currently within that network. We're, we will expand that in the in as we build out the game, but currently for the alpha, and especially the Alpha 0.3, that is how you can use a network within the Turbine C2 registry. So there are four kinds of networks within this registry. The first one here is 19.4 controlled. What that means, this is the kind of thing that you'll be given from previous missions, like the Rosenberg Clinic one. Also, as you raise in levels, you may gain access to additional things. 
and it this will be where your current mission objectives will appear so as you use fox, fox acid attacks against various networks they will appear here you can also see there are agent controls right now i have none because i have not performed a fox acid attack against any networks in this session but this is where you would be able to build up your own uh network selection so you can do side quests you can do it in your own free time build up your network that's where that will appear now the hive minds network is a stealth network similar to sirp nets used by the u.s government and then encrypted civilian uh networks like tor or i2p addresses currently you can see here there are some player created server nodes this is where the the player created server nodes will be populated also networks related to the various factions so here you can see some of the various player created factions and you'll get to learn much more about them as we move forward which is exciting and the other thing that you'll find on the hive mind network is going to be the uh, 194 central infrastructure and other main channel uplinks by various other intelligence agencies within the 194 universe finally we have the rogue network so this here is a extremely specialized networks that will be sold on the black market so you can see it already here it's got a lot of nodes in this network we don't know too much about it but we can assume it's very powerful now speaking about that power let's go back to the 194 control networks for a second you can see here in this one that it's e5 level and that has five nodes and various different ones have various different amounts what that means is quantity and quality of control over that network so the the greater control you have over a network the this number will increase going towards a and increasing increasing in value that will mean you have more a, a better control over the nodes within that network and then the nodes themselves are going to be the quantity within that network that you control Right now, we don't have a mechanic for increasing that control, but that is something that we're going to be working in to future iterations of 19.4. We really want you to be able to go in, look at the networks you have currently in the registry, and improve them so that they can be you. You can better use them as resources, basically, uh, in moving forward. So right now, there there is nothing set up, but we are we are hoping to get a mechanic in there that will allow you to really play around uh, with these networks and improve them. So let's look, let's take control of a network, shall we? I'll, I'll use an example and we'll go through the process and I'll show you how we'll get a network onto our system. So you can see here, currently it's local host root. This means we're not on anyone else's network. So we're gonna go and do a fox acid attack against Super Terum. Our Black Watchman players will remember Super Terum well, uh, and they are a, a fun organization. I won't spoil anything about what they do, just in case you have not played season one of the Black Watchman, but that, that is our target of choice. Now, keep in mind, none of the targets that we use in these tutorials are ones you actually have to use for your missions, but they are available to you. You can follow along my process and you will actually be able to add them to your registry. Information gathering module initiated. Information gathering module initiated. So what we're going to do is we're going to do two um, DNS attacks against SuperTerum to try and find some of their subdomains, see how we can inject malware using the Fox Acid. All right, so let's do a S fuzzer against them for 30 seconds and over here we'll do an OSINT scan of them for the first 500 results from Google. Now you can see I copy and pasted Super Terum's website because I always misspell it. You can copy and paste from an external source uh, into the terminal uh, and we so Keep that in mind if you have a particularly hard subdomain. So now the scan is starting here and the scan is starting here. So here 
On the S fuzzer, we found three subdomains. We got the their website, support, and blog. Over here, we got five. We have portal, file server, support, blog, and their website. Now let's run a, let's do some port scanning against the file server, see what we can find, see how we can inject that Fox Acid malware. Information gathering module initiated. So we're running a port scan against the file server subdomain of Superterum to see what comes up. Now remember, I'm opening an up another workstation. It's always you know, easier for you to just open up a new workstation when you're doing a different type of module, but you can do as many as you want within the one. Now while this is running, we'll open up another one since multitasking is key and we'll get the host fingerprint ready. Information gathering module initiated. So we are going to fingerprint file server at SuperTerum and let's figure out which port we are going to be using. Uh, you can see here the uh, port scan is almost complete and now once again you can follow along and do this to SuperTerum as I am doing it as an example and then you can see how it works and then use it for your active mission. So we have port 8081. So let's put port 8081 in here and see what comes up. Um, and then from this step, we're gonna be able to open up Fox, our Fox Acid. Fox Acid server connection initiated. And we're gonna be able to run that attack. So we're doing it against, we're doing a Fox Acid attack against file server dot superterum. We are doing it against port 8081 and let's figure out which technology we're doing it against. We're doing against QNAP. Okay, let's see if QNAP will work. There we go. So once we inject this malware, Hopefully it'll work. I get the feeling it will. Uh, we are going to get this, the file server access within the uh, SuperTerm network, and that's going to be added to our C2 registry. We'll be able to log into it, and then we'll do another uh, DNS and vhost mapping and see what we can find within their internal server. Turbine C2 registry. Initiated. So as you can see here, as soon as the Fox Acid attack is successful, it instantly opens up our Servine C2 registry, and now we have SuperTerum available. So let us connect to the C2. Now that we have access to the C2, we can, once again, you can click disconnect or connect there. You can see now, we are now connected to that network. Uh, and that will allow, now we're internally within SuperTerm's network, we can do different kinds of recon gathering. So if we open up these two here, we can try a S fuzzer attack against SuperTerm. Let's run this one for 30 seconds. But you'll see here, if we do an OSINT scan, Oh, if we run an OSINT scan, it will not work because now that we're on an internal network, we can't check and see what's happening with open source intelligence since that does not relate to our open network, to our, the internal network. I'll show you just as an example here. So you can see here, we have been able to access intranet at superterm.org. We were not able to access that last time. So that is an example of using the exact same parameters of the s attack. So we now know more about our superterm target because we're able to infiltrate within their network. And you can see here, we've gotten the same things. We do not have that intranet. 
So this allows us to, once again, learn more about our target because we're within their network. So that is all for the Turbine C2 registry. You now know how to use the command and control registry. It's very exciting and that will become a big part of 19.4 as we work to, in to improve it and increase what you can do within it. Really appreciate you taking the time to check out this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of Alpha 0.3 and we'll see you soon. Closing route access. Goodbye. You can find more 19.4 tutorials here like an intro to the Stinger OS, a look into the password attack module, the Turbine C2 registry, plus you can find a full playlist of hacking tools currently available in the game. You can also pre-order 19.4 by clicking on the bottom right hand of the screen. Community links to our Discord server and dedicated forums can be found in the description below.